Hello collectors, it's Steven here and welcome to my review of the Figma Zelda Twilight Princess version. Finally, Zelda gets an action figure that can go toe to toe with Figmas and SH Figuarts and it's from one of the most popular renditions of the character. A highly requested figure. Is this figure of the Princess Divine or is it a dud? Oh boy, I'm a little mixed. So, let's take a look to see whether or not it's worth adding into your collection. So, what do I mean by mixed? Zelda has a lovely aesthetic to her with a regal pearlescent paint scheme complemented by purple and gold with metallic gems. But with this fancy paint, there are some issues that make the paint ever so delicate. And there's one subtle quality control issue that, once you see it, you can't unsee it. Notice it yet? Comment down below once you do. Anyway, to sum it up, she's freaking beautiful with some small stuff you don't really notice until you're right up on it. Her face is sculpted neatly and the eye decals are applied pretty well. Some say it's not really accurate to the prototype, but I don't really see it and that's mostly Amazon Japan reviews. Her headband looks nice too, but note that there are some random gold drips that are super small up on her head on her brown hair. Speaking of her hair, it looks nice on the back, but not too many details are in the sculpt. It's just held together at the bottom by a silver band, and there's a little bit of gold there too. Her shoulders have gold protectors on them with blue gems in the center, and the grating, if that's the right word, is wonderful, sculpted very well. Plus the sculpting of the jewelry on the chest. Mmm-hmm, that chest sculpt. Anyway, have you seen the quality control issue yet? Time's up. The pearlescent paint begins on the bicep where the right one is painted, but not the left on mine. They forgot it. Now, I contacted Good Smile about this, and at the time of this recording, they have not gotten back to me, but if they do, I'll comment down below and I will pin it or I'll update the description. I don't know what I'm going to do. Anyway, main body looks great with the jewels in the midsection and the, uh, I don't know, the fabric with the symbols on the dress. It's a bit iffy in some spots with a printing issue here or there, but still, for the size and the detail, it looks nice. Her back exposes a little bit of skin, so it's nice to see some realistic details. Her dress details near the bottom are nice as well, but in a spot or two it may seem a bit off with a splotch like that black dot, but the ovals near the bottom by the trim are nice and uniform. Oh, and under her dress are completely sculpted functioning legs, which we'll take a look at more in the next section, but... Yeah, you're not really going to be seeing those. In sum, she does have some issues, mine a huge oversight, but the small issues for most can be forgiven. Zelda's articulation is pretty straightforward because from here down, we pretty much don't have much to offer. <laughs> we don't have much. Anyway, so what do we have? The hair here is on a hinge, so you can see it moves just like that. Doesn't twist or turn. The neck joint, as you can see here, just a little bit, is on a typical Figma swivel hinge. So this way you can spin Zelda's head from side to side and you can move it up and down. Be careful because, as you'll see, this part likes to come off for a little crown. Very stiff, moving the head up and down. And with the ability to move the hair, you get an even greater range of movement turning her head side to side. So for the shoulders, we have ball joints where they plug into the body. And then, similar to the Zero Suit Samus, we have pop-outs. Yeah, so that's cool. So she can get really broad shoulders there. She can look like a linebacker. And you can move them even further forward and back. So that's pretty cool. And then we have hinges at the shoulder itself so this way you can move her arms up and down like that you can spin them around so that's pretty neat yeah i'd say so we do have a bicep swivel right there so that's pretty cool and then there's also a swivel right up there at the shoulder too so that's pretty cool so we get lots of movement there the actual shoulder armor in and of itself um it won't move for me so i don't think it can move so that's okay. But anyway, to clarify, we do actually get a swivel where the sculpt plugs into the shoulder, and then the bicep here actually has a swivel. See that? Okay. Good. Elbows, Figma-style swivel hinge. So we do get your normal hinge here, and then they also move. So if you need another swivel there, you got that. Typical swivel hinge 
wrist joints. So you can spin them around. Note that it's not a true ball joint because you can't move them side to side if you can only move them that way. So see how I'm moving the hand that way? I have to stop and then turn it to get it to move the other way. So where that mark is, can't move it like that. Yeah. So we do have a joint right here at the er, chest area, ball joint. No pull out or whatnot. We can spin her around, get her to look about that far up, that far down. So that's okay. Now her dress. We get these two portions here, which are on Figma joints. So this way you can get the dress to fan out like so. About that far if you'd like. Uh, due to the sculpt, it may collide into each other, may rub into each other, knock into each other, whatever you want to say. So be careful there. You don't want to scuff up the paint. And then we have fully functioning legs underneath here. So we have all of the normal joints. So we have typical ball jointed, swivel hinge, yada, 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 all throughout the legs. But because of the dress, you're not really going to be able to use them too, too much. So let's just say for whatever reason you want to get Zelda in an action-y pose, right? So you swivel or whatever the dress out to the side. You can do that if you want. But then if you want to get the dress over here out, um, you can do that too. That, um, that looks a bit gnarly, doesn't it? Yeah, that don't look the best. So you do have nicely sculpted legs and whatnot, and you have full range of movement, you know, knee hinge, ankle rockers, toe hinge, all that good stuff. But it's not really usable, or if it is usable, it just flat out doesn't look good. So you have a little bit of movement from the waist down, but um, yeah, not the best. You just get a little bit more expression than you would out of a statue there. So yes, Zelda does have some articulation, but um, not necessarily the best. But what is available, it is most appreciated. Now for the accessories and their fitting for Zelda, but objectively, they're pretty light. <laughs> See what I did there? Eh, that's okay, I hate myself too. We get three sets of hands, an alternate faceplate, her sword, a light bow, and a light arrow. As usual, we also get a Figma support stand that plugs into her back, and a replacement wrist joint. So for the hands, we get the default fists, splayed hands, we get left and right hands to hold the sword, and we get the hands for the bow and arrow. To swap hands, just grip the hand near the wrist, near the joint, and pull. But be careful because I've noticed it's very easy to pop the joints off at the wrist. Not a big deal, you can pop them back in. Now the extra faceplate, which is interesting to swap. You take the front part of the crown off, pop the hair off, then pop the faceplate off. Then put the new faceplate on in reverse order. It can be awkward fitting it back together with the alternate happy faceplate. The crown was a real pita, and I had to force it in the first few times. But the new expression was absolutely worth it. Very nice looking. Now we have her sword, which is easy enough to get her to hold by popping it off at the handle, sliding it into one of her hands, then reattaching it near the hilt. Paint application is just fine with nothing too out of the ordinary here. It looks good, and it gets the job done. Now the light bow and arrow. The bow separates where she would hold it and you slide it into her hand as seen here. All you have to do is just reattach it and boom. The bow features the same pearlescent paint like Zelda has with yellow as well. And it looks really nice with only a little bit of paint slop outside of the designated sculpt marks, which is passable given the size. Some won't like it, but still, it looks pretty good. Now the light arrow, which can be difficult for some to get her to hold. The hand sculpt is weird, so she holds it by what the feathers would be on this light arrow, as it slides between her thumb and her hand. It's not really a stable connection at all, but it does get the job done. As you can see, the paint application is similar to the bow. So, those are the accessories in a nutshell, and like I said, the accessories are few, but they fit her well, and there's not really too much else I can think of that she should come with. Been a while since I played Twilight Princess. However, as you've seen with some of the pictures and more to come, other effect parts really make this figure better. And a size comparison with Link. As you can see, she fits in well with your 6-inch Nintendo or your Smash display, and she should fit in well on that spot you cleared on your shelf. So, buy now, skip, or wait for that deal. Zelda is very regal in appearance with some imperfections here and there. Mine being a dud as usual, with articulation that just meets acceptable. That dress basically makes her a statue. Very creative posing will be needed. Accessories are only few, but iconic to the character. 
Fans of Zelda and the series will absolutely enjoy this figure and will be happy to finally have a high-quality Zelda, not action, figure in their collection. But for $60, maybe wait to see if you can find it for a few dollars off. The main takeaway I have from this, Good Smile Company and Max Factory get to work on Ganondorf and Midna ASAP. If you can do this well with Zelda, you'll do them justice. Well, that's it for this video, but that doesn't mean you need to close out just yet. There are a few other videos that just popped up on your screen, so go ahead and click on those to watch some more of my videos. And then there's the description to check out, where I've linked to where you can get this figure or others like it, and the credits to see how this video was made, so be sure to check that out. Be sure to like the video, drop a comment, and subscribe. I love hearing from you. Thanks for watching, collectors, and I'll catch you in the next video.